أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف خلقه وخاتم أنبيائه وسيد رسله نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن اشكر لله أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respect the sisters and brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Wisdom is indeed something that you and I are seeking and look for developing throughout our lives and it is something that uh, truly is sought and looked for by many human beings when you hear of somebody who is actually wise you realize that they have a particular status and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes in the Holy Quran that wisdom is something that's given by him it is something that's bestowed by the Almighty Jalla wa Ala يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ chapter 2 verse 100, uh, 269 and Luqman al-Hakim that we are discussing, his story, his life, his teachings from the Holy Quran itself was bestowed with wisdom. What is this wisdom? Indeed, it is abundance of greatness. We, you know, define this Hakim as uh, seeking that which is indeed the source of righteousness. Now, the result of this wisdom is وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah says it's abundance of greatness. If you're given this hikmah, it's something phenomenal. It's amazing. It's life transformational. We should be looking for it and associating ourselves with the wise. But the word al-hakim is used in the Quran only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, al-aziz al-hakim 33 times or in relation to the holy Quran, al-Quran al-hakim. So Allah is the source of it. And through the Quran, if we want it, we need to adhere to him and of course to his instructions and teachings, which is uh, the Holy Quran. Now, knowledge is not wisdom. It is prerequisite to hikmah, but there is a difference between having ilm and having hikmah. Essentially, there isn't a definition of hikmah as such, but some scholars have come forward and said, it is a true understanding of something. It stops you, you and I from acting wrongly. It is when we place something in its rightful location. That is what hikmah is. Allama Tabatabai, one of the Mufassireen of, uh, of the school of Ahl al-Bayt says, it is the arguments that lead to the truth without having any doubts. It's the burhan, i.e. it is powerful reasoning. And of course, you know, other ulama have come forward and said, well, it comes from the root hakama, which means to stop. To stop what? To stop wrong and to stop indeed corruption. Um, hikmah, my dear sisters and brothers, is knowledge, ilm, which is useful. It is beneficial. This hikmah, according to hadith, is something that is somehow headed by taqwa. Amir al Mu'minin wa Imam al Muttaqin Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamu alayhi says, Rasul hikmah. Allah. You know, the the pinnacle and the best of hikmah is to have taqwa, God consciousness, to be fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment and of course his presence. Amir al-Mu'mineen says it's a tree that is, is rooted in the heart and the fruits are seen in the tongue. Hence, there is a direct coloration with the heart when it comes to hikmah. People ask, how do we attain hikmah? Well, there is a famous narration. مَنْ أَخْلَصَ لِلَّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ صَبَاحًا جَرَتْ يَنَابِعُ الْحِكْمَةِ مِنْ قَلْبِهِ عَلَى لِسَانِهِ Whomsoever um, expresses sincerity and you know devotion to God and for God alone, for 40 days, hikmah wisdom will ooze 
from the heart towards the tongue. It is all about removing ostentation. It's all about the purity of thought and action. It's all about sincerity and removing any form of uh, association uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this ikhlas is interesting because the month of Ramadan is the month of ikhlas, my dear sisters and brothers. Sayyidatun Nisa Fatima al Zahra sallallahu wa sallam alayhi says, Allah has made fasting obligatory for you so that ikhlas is truly established. Because normally, you know, when you when you pray, you have to stand and you actually do some actions. When you go to Hajj, you go somewhere else. When you give, you have to give. But fasting is inward. You don't really tell people. You don't really go around and say, I am fasting. Although I remember a story that once an individual performed salah uh, a layl or was performing at night in the mosque and somebody entered, looked at him praying and said, wow, mashallah, may Allah bless this individual. Really amazing, you know, performing salah to lay it all by himself in the mosque. And this person was so full of himself that when he heard this, he actually broke his salah, looked around and says, brother, by the way, I was fasting today as well. <laughs> so sometimes what we do is we seek the, the attention and the approval of others. Ikhlas is the story of hikmah, isn't it? And ikhlas is something that we may be able to attain in the month of Ramadan because ikhlas is all about thinking that Allah is watching me and I need his pleasure and I don't need the pleasure of others and if others praise me that's not a problem as long as I'm not looking for it but ikhlas is all about me realizing that it should govern my life and my actions and my deeds and my statements and my words and everything that I do because he is watching me and I'll be held accountable for it so ultimately what I have to be seeking to do is to constantly scrutinize myself. Am I doing this for Allah? Am I doing it for other human beings? Um, if I'm doing it for other human beings, that is the ultimate purpose, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. And sometimes, you know, we are punished because of our uh, lack of sincerity in our intention. I remember one of the ulama mentioning this story. He said, you know, every year I go um, to recite majalis in certain countries and what happens is there is a, a a businessman who comes to see me every year when I go to this particular place uh, and he lives there because he, he says I went to the same center for a few years. When I went there, um, I remember uh, the fact that he comes to see me after the majalis and gives me some money. And every year, the amount of money he gives me, all this, whatever he gives me, I use for the orphans and the poor and the needy. So I reserved it. One year before going, I said, you know, this year I'm going to keep it for myself. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to give it to the poor and the needy this year. So he said, I went, everything finished. The man was delayed. He didn't come to see me. Eventually he came the last day before I'm traveling. I was like, oh, brother, I haven't seen you this year. You normally come to see me. He said, yes, sorry, I've been busy, but I bought you something. So I expected him to give me that particular amount of money. But instead he gave me a bag. I looked at the bag and it had a shroud, a kafan. So I was thinking, why is he giving me a kafan this year and not money? And then it struck me, Allah is reminding me, you changed your niyyah. Remember death, remember akhirah. That what you were doing before was helping you. What you were doing before is your investment for your akhirah. Why did you change your niyyah? Why did you all of, a, all of a sudden alternate it? So this is very, very important. And of course, a great deal of perseverance, humility, patience, uh, hunger, silence, forgiveness, all this is required, you know, so that we can really attain hikmah. All this is uh, needed as well. You know, just uh, on this, I want to touch on a point with regards to utilizing hikmah because in Surah An Naml, verse 165, uh, we are told that um, there is a, a role of hikmah in our lives. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Um, إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن. Invite people to the path of your Lord, not coercion or forcing. Inviting them, and this is a key point. People who are at the forefront of tabligh, people who are alims and speakers, people who are teachers, parents when they're teaching children. We must do what is known as tahbibul iman. We must make sure people love religion, love faith, love Allah, love their practices. We mustn't come down hard. Yes, in some occasions we have to be uh, strict, but not monstrous, not in the same kind of attitude whereby we make people detest faith.
but present it in a beautiful, nice, accepting manner. Now, the Quran says, Id'u ila sabil rabbika, the path of Allah. Show it to them and they'll travel to the path. Yes? And the way you do it should be carefully thought. That is where wisdom comes in, isn't it? So, bil hikmati wal mawadat al hasana, reasoning, using the power of the intellect. Yes, applied to the heart, soft spoken. Musa is told when you go to Fir'aun, speak softly to him so that you can affect his heart. Right? So, when the Quran says, Hikmah, Hikmah wal Mu'adat al Hasana, Allah is saying, the heart as well as the aql. Wajadilhum billati hiya ahsan. So, give them proof, show them signs, uh, use intellectual discourses so that you can attain what is best to be achieved. So, Hikmah, therefore, was a hallmark of Luqman. And that's why he was known as Luqman al-Hakim. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this month of Ramadan, we are able to uh, really move on the journey to attain Hikmah, be of the wise individuals. The month of Ramadan has so many bounties. Some are apparent. Some we can really take on. But some are hidden. Some are truly embed within us when we observe the fast and abstain from the food and drink. But more importantly, from that which, which we are not supposed to look at, that which we are not supposed to say or uh, listen or do, maybe that will enhance our soul's capability and be able to really welcome the whole uh, development into being a more wiser human being. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين Now in addition to what um, uh, we mentioned with regards to how Luqman attained wisdom, we are told of a, a number of other narrations that highlight his uh, great qualities and characteristics. One of them is that he used to lower his gaze. And, uh, you know, Quran emphasizes this to be so important. Uh, uh, and the Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, they're in the gaze from that which we cannot see, of course. The Prophet says, absarakum al -ajaib. Lower your gazes, you'll see wonders. You know, and the narration it says, there are certain eyes that will not uh, see, uh, will not cry on the day of Qiyamah, will not be burnt by Jahannam on the day of Qiyamah. And uh, the, the eyes that, of course, cry for the fear of Allah, they stay up at night, but also... The ones that lower its gaze when uh, there is something, for example, tempting to look at. And this applies for both males and females, by the way. Another one that uh, Luqman apparently did was kafful lisan. That he would be very controlling of what he says. And then also al-iffatu fi ta'am. Modesty, moderation. فَلْيَنْظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِ Quran says, look at what you're eating. You know, why are you eating? What is the purpose? You know, Imam al-Sadiq salam says, if your purpose in life is to eat, then your worth is what comes out of you. That's it. At the end of the day, uh, when we eat, we have to have effa, means modesty, means, you know, respect in the idea that I'm eating for the sake of gaining strength. It's not the purpose. It's not the goal. It's a means so that I get energy and I'm able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, undertake my uh, usual responsibilities and duties. So Luqman uh, had these qualities. He was able to attain this particular wisdom. Now, let's live, uh, we want to have a look at the Quran. The story of Quran, of, uh, the story of Luqman over the Quran, over a few verses, highlights some of the key aspects that he also attained and uh, was successful at. And inshallah, for that, we will look at and examine next time. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي اللهم على محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين